Hello everyone, if you watched my last video then you know I recently went to Portland and Seattle. It was my first time ever going there and I had so much fun. I of course did some vintage shopping and I actually came home with quite a few things so I decided to do a haul and also I have some clothing that I purchased before my trip and then a few items I bought at Magnolia and Willow after my trip. So this is a collective haul of the last two weeks. First, I'm going to start by sharing everything I purchased while I was in Portland. The first shop I went to in Portland was called Exhibe Vintage. I've been following them on Instagram forever and I've been dying to get in their store. They are a little bit on the pricey side because they have really pristine and amazing pieces of vintage clothing and accessories and they really have just top-notch stuff. I think it's more formal wear and also people get their wedding dresses there so they're definitely on the high-end side of vintage which is actually pretty cool because I am usually a very bargainy person so I don't go in those types of shops too often but it was kind of like walking into a museum or something their stuff was just so beautiful but I did pick up one item that was very affordable it is this amazing purse I love the length of the strap and the colors and the dress I was wearing that day actually matches these colors perfectly. So I had to get it for that reason alone and I wore it that day. But yeah, this purse is just a great size and it's great for summer and I love it so much. The next shop I went to was called Vintage Pink and they had so much great mid-century stuff. The shops in Portland had so many big eye paintings, but I didn't want to bring them home because I didn't really have room in my bags, so that was unfortunate, but there was so many great ones in that store. At Vintage Pink, I only purchased a few magazines and a book. The book I got is this Better Homes and Gardens Guide to Entertaining. It's from the year 1969, and the images and the decor and everything in it are so amazing, and I really love books that are about etiquette or entertaining those types of things I love buying books about that stuff and I really do read them and take notes I'm pretty intense about my vintage books I get a lot of use out of them and I do a lot of research through them and I picked up four magazines from that shop first is this sunset magazine from April 1970 and I also got this sunset magazine from November 1967 the next two magazines I was very, very excited about. The first one is this Better Homes and Gardens from May 1954. The images and the illustrations and the fonts in these magazines are incredible and I really do recommend if you're trying to do research on history of this era, magazines are the greatest source of inspiration and research and just for design or anything you're interested in, if you're researching a certain era, I highly suggest buying magazines. And lastly, I got this House Beautiful magazine from June 1972. It is filled with some colorful and kitschy homes and I am so excited to get some inspiration from this magazine. And while in Portland, I also had to stop by Pals Books, which is a very well-known bookstore. Their shop is huge. I actually went to two different locations and I picked up a few things. I got two non-book items. The first is this little Capricorn cat magnet. I thought it was so cute, had to get it. And I had to get this dish towel with a Siamese cat on it because as you guys know, I have two Siamese cats and it says, my mantra is meow. And I did pick up one book from Pals. It is called The Art of Gathering. I've seen a few people post this on Instagram and as I just stated, I'm very interested in entertaining and reading books on that subject. So I figured this would be a great read for me. While in Portland, I also stopped by a tiki bar. I'm trying to visit a tiki bar in every city I visit if they have one. So that is mine and Brandon's new little tradition that we do while we're traveling. The tiki bar we went to is called Hale Pele. I'm probably butchering that, I don't know. And of course I added another tiki mug to my collection. I really love this one because I only have one other tiki mug that has a tiki face. 
So I'm happy to add more tiki themed mugs to my collection. Now moving on to the things I purchased in Seattle. The first shop I went to in Seattle was called the Fremont Vintage Mall. They were huge and had so many great booths. I actually kind of stuck to a theme while I was there. I got a few Disney things. So as you guys know, if you watched my kitchen tour video, I have a few trays like this. I have a Texas one and I got this California Disneyland one. I've seen this once before and it was really expensive so I didn't purchase it, but this one was $15, which I thought was a pretty good deal. I, of course, love it even more because it has Bambi on it and that is really what sold me, but yeah, I love collecting vintage Disney stuff. And I got another Disneyland tray, but this one just has Mickey Mouse and I think it's so cute. I've started a collection of Disney picture discs. I have The Lady and the Tramp and Bambi. So I saw this Snow White one there for only $3, so I couldn't pass it up. It is broken right here on the sleeve but the vinyl plays great i already listened to it and i'm hoping to collect all of these vintage picture discs because they are just so cute and i love listening to disney music it makes me so happy and the last thing i got from the fremont vintage mall are these little tiki salt and pepper shakers like i said i'm trying to add more tiki faced items to my collection so these go great in my hutch next to all my mugs and the next shop i went to was probably my favorite of the entire trip it's called the junk drawer and in the the front is a vintage shop and in the back is a 1970s style bar and it was just so awesome. There's just people sitting around drinking beer. I was the only person doing any vintage shopping but they had a really great curated selection of items and pretty much everything in there was the type of stuff I love so it was so much fun to shop around in there. First thing I picked up there is so cool and so random. It is a screwdriver, but not just any screwdriver. It's called Abel Mabel the Workbench Wench, and it is this girl that clips on to your pocket. I don't have one, but if you were a guy working in a shop, it would click on to your shirt pocket, and it's just a little screwdriver. I'm not gonna use it because, you know, I don't wanna break it or anything, but <laughs> I am in love with this, it's so cute. I also picked up two vintage Archie items. The first is this Archie Comics Digest. It's from the year 1977, and I just love the art in all of these old comics. And the next item is a very rare and cool find. It is this Archie's vinyl. And the owner of the shop told me that he believes that this writing is in Israeli. So that is just so unique and cool and the record does work and the songs are in English so that's cool as well. But I have never even seen an Archie's vinyl, let alone an Israeli one. So I'm very excited about this find. And I did pick up another Disney item. This is a vintage Bambi embroidery kit and the owner told me that all of the pieces and everything I need to complete it are inside. So I'm definitely gonna get around to making this at some point. But it is, I don't know if that's Japanese writing, I'm not sure where it's from. But it was really cool that they had so many vintage international items. I never see stuff like this. I also picked up two postcards. This one says, don't let distance make your heart grow fonder for somebody else. The next one is funny. It says, think I'll stay longer. Things are pretty well in shape here. They had quite a few decks of nudie cards, which is something I've been on the hunt for. Haven't found a good deck yet, but this was the first one I've seen that I really liked. I think it's from the late 60s or early 70s, but I really just love the backgrounds and the styles in these photos. You guys probably think I'm a freak for always buying all this vintage nude stuff, but I just love it. I don't even know why. And the last item I picked up at the junk drawer is Nancy Sinatra's Boots Vinyl. I love all the songs on this record and I've been playing it nonstop since I've been home. While in Seattle, I also popped into Buffalo Exchange and I got one item. It is this vintage cheerleading shirt. It is made out of wool and kind of itchy and warm. So I definitely will not be wearing it until the fall because it is so hot. Although California doesn't really have much of a fall, it's kind of just 
hot until Christmas, which really sucks because I like fall. But I think this would look so cute with skinny jeans and I cannot wait until it gets a little bit cooler outside so I can start wearing it. All right, now I'm gonna share some of the clothing I purchased before my trip. I went to some of the shops down on 4th Street in Long Beach, which is also known as Retro Row. There's a bunch of vintage stores all right next to each other on this one strip and they have some great stuff. So I went to La Bamba and I got this 1960s or 70s red and white dress. I ended up not wearing it on the trip because it is slightly see-through and I just did not feel comfortable. I don't know, I need to get like a really short slip or something to wear underneath it. But that has been my problem lately with dresses. They're always see-through, I don't even know why. And I also got this really brightly colored Hawaiian dress. I actually ended up wearing this twice on my trip and once I wore it down, I wore it just going shopping around Seattle and then I also wore it, I think, to Brandon's Portland show. But it just, it's so great for day or night and I think I'm gonna be wearing this so much because I love looser fitting dresses that are casual like this. And the last item I purchased from La Bamba is this Hawaiian print skirt. I wanted to get a skirt that was on the more casual and also shorter side. This wasn't exactly what I had in mind, but I am happy I found it and I think it's a great summer skirt. So I'll be wearing this quite a bit. And I also went to IK Vintage and picked up two dresses. I got this dress. I really loved this opening right here on the chest. I think it's so cute and it's very lightweight and pretty and I need more dresses like that. And I also got this dress. It has a bunch of J's on it. I don't know what that means. I have no idea. Maybe they made letter dresses for every letter. That would be so cool. I really wish it had E's on it or a letter that had some sort of meaning. J's have zero meaning for me, but I still really liked the shape of it and thought it was really cute. I also forgot about a few other purchases I made, so I'm actually adding quite a few more items onto this haul. I ordered a few things off of Pygmy Hippo's website, which is this tiny little store in Los Angeles. It is the cutest gift shop on earth, and if you're ever in LA, I highly recommend you go check them out. But I purchased three little book magazine type of things. The first one is How to Simplify Your Housekeeping. It is a little pamphlet from the 50s for homemakers. I actually purchased this in particular for a future video I'm filming. So you guys should try to guess what this video is that I plan on filming in the comments. Um, I'm not gonna let you know if you're right, so you'll just have to wait and see. And I also got this one. It is special guide for brides-to-be. I am not a bride-to-be at the moment, but you know, someday I will, and this will come in handy. And I also got this magazine. It's more like a zine, but it's called The Idea Shop, and it is from the 50s, I believe, but this is also research for that future video coming up. I have been buying so many books recently. I didn't even realize it till this moment, but I have so much to read. So last week when I got home, I went to a shop called Skylight Books. It was right next door to this vegan restaurant called Honey Bee. So my mom and sister and I stopped in and I picked up a few books because they had a great selection of art and decor books. So I got this one, it is called The Mid-Century Kitchen and it is filled with so many great photos and also a really great history of the modern day kitchen. And I have started to read this and it's a really great read. And I also picked up this one. It's called Mid-Century Modern Living, The Mini Modern's Guide to Pattern and Style. And the reason I purchased this book is because, as you guys know, I have a booth with my mom at a shop called Magnolia and Willow. And we do a lot of collecting and selling. So this was really cool because there's a lot of great photos and references to what items are called and what year they're from. And I really needed something like this because it's kind of hard to know the history of everything you purchase. I mean, I look up stuff on Google, obviously, but having a book like this with stuff to be on the lookout for is really helpful. 
and I also am gonna get so much inspiration for decorating in this book. All right, now for everything I purchased from Magnolia and Willow, and I got more books. This is kind of ridiculous, and I feel like all the books I own and haven't read give me major anxiety and dread, and I don't know why I do this to myself. So I guess I just better start making more time for reading, um, which is something I haven't been doing lately, so this will give me an excuse for that. I got this little pamphlet cookbook called Fast, Fun, and Fancy. It's from the year 1960, and I mainly purchased this because of the amazing illustrations. And I also purchased the Chinese Party Cookbook from 1973. I love that the color is this really great pink and the photos inside are so beautiful. They are heavily meat, which, you know, I don't eat meat, but I love looking at the styling of these photos and it makes me wanna make a Chinese recipe for the vintage vegans. All right, and the last two books I got are kind of like a pair. I am currently reading Julia Child's autobiography, My Life in France. So I'm just so like engulfed in her life right now and really loving her. So when I saw that the owner of Magnolia and Willow brought in Mastering the Art of French Cooking Volume 1 and 2, I had to buy it. I've never attempted a French recipe, I don't think. So if you guys are interested in seeing me veganize a recipe in one of these books, please let me know. We'll do it kind of Julia and Julia style if you've ever seen that movie. Um, it's not the greatest movie ever, but it got me interested in Julia Child, so I'm thankful for that. So yeah, yeah, just let me know if that is something you'd be interested in seeing. All right, I also picked up a few non-book items from Magnolia and Willow. The first is this little ballerina girl. I think she may have been a cake topper because she is plastic, but as you guys know, in my bathroom, I have quite a few ballerina items, and I was a dancer growing up, so I am very drawn to ballerina things. So I'm gonna put this in my bathroom and add to my collection. I also got this jar of cake toppers and there's a lot of ballerinas in here as well as some little like St. Patrick's Day elves. I thought it was so cute, it was only $3 so I had to get it. I really want to make a vintage cake and have a lot of these ballerina girls on the top, so that's why I purchased this. Don't know when I'm going to get around to doing that, but something that is on my to-do list. I have a small collection of typewriter ribbon tins, and I've never seen one this beautiful, so I had to get it to add to my collection, but I just love using them as little cases to store safety pins or calligraphy nibs or just all sorts of things. They come in handy. You can also put it in your purse and have little things in your purse like jewelry or something. There's really so many things you can use these for so I just like having them on hand and I think they're so beautiful and since typewriter ribbon isn't a thing anymore, it is such a thing of the past and I love collecting them. And my last purchase from Magnolia and Willow is this little lady head wall pocket. She's so beautiful and I think I'm gonna put her in my bathroom. And the last thing I wanna mention is that my skateboard company street plant just started making coffee and mugs. So I know a lot of you guys probably don't skateboard, so you'd have no reason to support my company, but if you drink coffee and want a cute enamel mug, then definitely go check that out. I'll put the link below to my website where you can get both of these items. At the moment, we're selling the mug and coffee as kind of a package deal, but in the future, we will probably sell the mugs and coffee separately. But yeah, if you are interested in supporting Street Plant, then go check that out. I love the way these turned out. They're made in the USA, actually in Dallas, Texas, in a neighborhood called Deep Ellum, if you guys are familiar with that. So I'm just really proud that we got these great mugs made in the US. All right guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video.